15歳なんですえ15歳なのこんにちはジャパニーズアモのミサです Hey guys Today I'm going to teach you how to use the explanatory particle のをんだ If you thought the explat what? That's okay. That's normal. Actually, a lot of Japanese people would have said, Nani sore, oishi no? Nani sore, oishi no? This is, by the way, one of the most famous Japanese internet slang. Nani sore, oishi no? What's that? Is it yummy? Basically, this internet meme is used when you have no idea what the thing is. Like, you don't even want to accept the concept of the thing. When Japanese people hear gairaigo, words borrowed from other languages, Japanese politicians like to use all those difficult gairaigo, and a lot of people would go, Nani sore, oishii no? Obviously, we know that it's not food, but that's the point. Anyway, even in this sentence, oishii no has this no at the end, and this no is the explanatory no. Particle. So I hope you already know that the no particle can also be used as the possessive particle. So if I say Misa no Pikachu, then that means Misa's Pikachu. This no particle can be like the apostrophe S, or you can also translate like of, like you can say Hon no Ichibu to mean a part of the book or the shape of the ears. Mimi no katachi. Like, elfu no mimi no katachi. So, this possessive particle has to be between two nouns, right? Misa no Pikachu. Mimi no katachi. And so on. But the nani sore oishi no mem. This no is used at the end, right? And it works differently from the possessive particle. This no at the end is called the explanatory particle because it's used when you explain your situation or when you want explanation from someone. So, this is again often lost in translation, but using this particle can give the nuance of I'm curious, tell me more, or hey. Guess what? I have this news. And also, because this is used to explain, it's also used when you explain the reasons. So, you can also often translate like because. So, let's take a look at this conversation. A. Neko honto ni kawaii na. Neko honto ni kawaii na. Oh, cats are really cute. Neko, cat. Honto ni, really. Kawaii, cute. And this na at the end is often used when you talk to yourself. Like when you're saying, oh, I'm hungry. And you're not really saying it to anyone. You're just saying it to yourself. You're just talking to yourself. You can say, oh, onaka suita na. Onaka suita na. Onaka suita means hungry. This na basically doesn't mean anything, but it just adds the nuance that you're talking to yourself. So, Neko honto ni kawaii na. Oh, cats are so cute. And if I said that, maybe my friend could say, Nande neko kawanai no? Nande neko kawanai no? So, Nande means why. You can say, Doshite or Nande for why, but Nande is more casual than doshite. Nande, why? Neko, a cat. Kawanai no. Kawanai is the negation of the verb kau. Kau can mean quite a few things, but like in this kanji, kau can mean to buy. But kau in this sentence means to have a pet, to take care of a pet. Basically, you say petto kau. To mean to have a pet. Or if you want to say, I have a dog, you can say, Inu o katte iru informally and Inu o katte imasu formally. But when you want to say, I will have a dog, like you're talking about the future, you say, Inu o kau, Inu o kau, or Inu o 
kaimasu. So you use the dictionary form. And when you want to say, I will not have a dog, then you negate the dictionary form again, kawanai o kaimasen. So the friend said, kawanai no? Why will you not get a cat? Why don't you get a cat? Like maybe I always talk about how I like cats, but I never talk about actually getting one. And my friend is like, Nande neko kawanai no? So this no particle is used to prompt the other person to answer why the other person doesn't have a cat or won't get a cat. So this no particle is actually often used with doshite or nande, why, a lot. To make this question more formal, instead of the no particle, we use n desu ka, n desu ka. So, doshite neko o kawanai desu ka? Doshite neko o kawanai desu ka? This has exactly the same meaning, but it's just more formal. So the only thing we changed was we changed nande into doshite because that sounds more formal. And kawanai part is the same. We cannot use the mass form in front of this no or n desu ka. Uh, remember, the mass form can generally only be used at the end of the sentence. So kawanai n desu ka, n desu ka. So if you don't use this n desu ka and say doshite neko kaimasen ka? So you just use this mass form masen ka? Why don't you get a cat? It's grammatically correct, but it's not as natural as doshite neko kawanai desu ka? Because this kawanai desu ka can really show that the speaker is interested to know why the other person doesn't get a cat. So you sound less like a textbook robot. So the friend says, Nande neko kawanai no? Nande neko kawanai no? And the person who said neko kawaii na can answer like, Neko allergy nanda. Neko allergy nanda. I have a cat allergy. I'm allergic to cats. So, neko allergy is how we say cat allergy. Neko allergy. And when you want to say I have a cat allergy, I'm allergic to cats, you can usually say neko allergy desu. Neko allergy desu. But saying neko allergy desu sounds very weird. You want to explain why you don't have a cat. And you want to say that you have an allergy, that's why. You'd say, Neko allergy nanda. Neko allergy nanda. So this nda is the same as no in the question. So when you ask a question informally, you use no, no. And when you ask a question formally, you say, N desu ka? Or when it's not a question, you'd use this nda at the end nda or ndes formally you can actually use no when it's not a question but it tends to sound feminine so neko allergy na no is grammatically correct but it can sound feminine and if you don't care about sounding feminine go ahead but even girls or women use da at the end instead of the no particle uh, because no can sometimes sound also a bit childish not just feminine but also a little bit childish not always but that is more neutral and I would say more common but if you want to sound feminine you can say neko allergy na no neko allergy na no that's completely fine. If you're writing a novel, for example, you can also use no to show the readers that the character who is speaking is feminine. And also it's na nda at the end, right? Or na no. 
So the reason why this na appears is because arerugi is a noun. So when we want to put this no particle or nda or ndes, doesn't matter which one you use. So you say noun, na, no, noun, na, nda, noun, na, ndes, when you want to explain your situation. But basically, when you can add the phrase that's why, you can use this no or nda. So you might be wondering, uh, why can't we just use kara, which means because? And you can, but you can also use nda or ndes. So you could, for example, say neko arerugi da kara kaenai. I can't have a cat because I have a cat allergy. Neko arerugi da kara kaenai. But kara means because, and that's quite a strong statement. It's because I'm allergic to cats. This happens in English too. Sometimes you don't use the word because even when someone asks why. For example, someone could ask, why are you late? Doshite okureta no? Doshite okureta no? Or more formally, doshite okureta n desu ka? Doshite okureta n desu ka? Okureta is how we say was late, to be late. And instead of saying because I got caught in traffic, because I got stuck in a traffic jam, you can say I got stuck in a traffic jam. You know, you don't have to say the word because. It actually sounds more natural not to. In Japanese, I would say Jutai ni makikomaretanda. Jutai ni makikomaretanda. Jutai is traffic jam. Makikomareru is like to get caught in something. Jutai ni makikomaretanda. Informally and jutai ni makikomareta n desu. So here, jutai ni makikomareta kara is grammatically correct but not very natural. It's like there is meant to be a correct answer. Jutai ni makikomareta kara. It's okay, but it sounds also a bit blunt. Whilst jutai ni makikomareta no, jutai ni makikomareta n da. This nda is used to explain your situation, right? So this sounds a bit better than because I was caught in traffic. Jutai ni makikomareta kara. And also, nda or ndes aren't always used as because, like you don't always translate as because. If someone asks what's wrong, you often answer what's wrong using this nda or ndes. So for example, what's wrong? You can say, doushita no? Doushita no? Or doushita n desu ka? More formally, doushita n desu ka? This is a really good phrase to remember, by the way. Doushita no? You could say doushita, but that sounds a bit rough. Sometimes maybe male characters say it in anime, but generally people say doushita no? Or doushita n desu ka? Actually, you might also hear doushita n da in anime, but it sounds a lot more rough. Doushita n da, and it sounds more like your commander or something. So try to stick to doushita no or doushita n desu ka. So I'm acting a bit strange, like like I look like I'm in pain, and you can ask doushita no. What's wrong? And I could say, "Onaka itai nda, onaka itai nda." My stomach hurts. I have a stomach ache. So, "Onaka ga itai" is how we say, "My stomach hurts" or "I have a stomach ache." Onaka ga itai. And if someone asks, "Doushita no?" Just saying, "Onaka ga itai" sounds unnatural. It just doesn't sound very native-like. You want to say "onaka ga itai n da" or "onaka ga itai no" if you want to sound more feminine, or formally "onaka ga itai n des" to explain why I'm like like this, <laughs> or I look really sad, and you can say "misa kanashi sou 
どうしたの ?You look sad, Misa.What's wrong?Misa, 悲しそう。どうしたの ?And I can say, 指輪をなくしたの。お、指輪をなくしたんだ。I lost my ring. 指輪をなくしたの。指輪をなくしたんだ。お、もフォーマリー。どうしたんですか指輪をなくしたんです。So you could translate like because I lost my ring. That's why I'm sad. But when people ask どうしたの and you would say it's because I lost my ring. You don't really say 指輪をなくしたから。指輪をなくしたから。Because I lost my ring. It's okay if you want to make a sentence like I'm sad because I lost my ring. 指輪をなくしたから悲しい。That's like the sentence made by the speaker. But if someone asks what's wrong, you don't really answer like blah blah から。You often use this んだ or んです。Or you can say why you don't seem well. Even when the other person doesn't ask どうしたの。Maybe instead that person can say 元気なさそうだね。元気なさそうだね。So, 元気ないを元気がない is like not energetic or not well. And 元気がなさそう。I already made a lesson on this. So, you seem, you look. 元気なさそうだね。You don't look well, you don't seem very energetic. And I could answer like, Kaze hi tanda, or Kaze hi tan desu. I call a cold. Or for example, your friend is crying, and you want to say, Why are you crying? You would use no, or n desu ka for the question. So, why are you crying? Why? どうして Or more informally, なんで And to cry. Naku, naku, and crying right now. So you want to make the te form, right? So naku becomes naite. And to be crying. Naite iru, naite iru. And even if you want to make this sentence formal, we are not going to use the must form because, in order to change the formality for this sentence when using ndes ka or no, you only change the ending. So if it's informal, you put no. If it's formal, you put ndes ka. Right, so naiteru stays the same. Actually, if you want to make it super informal, you can get rid of the i between te and ru and say naiteru, naiteru. That's the only thing I would change for the informal speech. Anyway, the whole sentence first informally. Nande naiteru no? Nande naiteru no? And if you want to make this formal, maybe change nande into doshite. どうして泣いているんですかどうして泣いているんですか Why are you crying? Like, tell me why. Like, I want to help. I want to know the reason. So here, if you say どうして泣いてる or どうして泣いていますか It just doesn't sound very warm at all. It just sounds like a textbook speech. Why are you crying? So, you know, it just doesn't sound like you have emotion. <laughs> so you want to say, どうして泣いてるのどうして泣いているんですか So all the example sentences have been quite sad ones, right? Or something negative, but it doesn't have to be negative at all. It could be like, why do you look so happy? Oh, it's because something good happened. You can use this nda to explain why you're happy too. So, do you guys remember how to say, You look happy? Ureshi so, ureshi so. So, you could say, Ureshi so da ne. 
You look happy. 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 もうすぐもうすぐ A new Pokemon game 新しいポケモンのゲーム新しいポケモンのゲーム And then to be released or to be sold We use the verb Something を発売する Something を発売する When you release a product You use this verb, 発売する To make it mean to be sold, we want to use the passive form again. So the passive form of する is, this is irregular, so. される,されるそれ So something が発売される is how we say something will be released, something will be sold. So ゲームが発売される Is like a game will be released, a game will be sold. Almost like a set phrase. When you talk about a game being sold, you say, Game が発売される So the whole sentence, もうすぐ新しいポケモンのゲームが発売される And I want to say, That's why I'm happy. So to explain that, we want to put んだんです at the end. So the whole sentence would be もうすぐ新しいポケモンのゲームが発売されるんだ And more formally you simply change んだ into んです and say 発売されるんです Or 嬉しそうだね You look happy And you want to say I passed the gel PT You can say gel PT or you can say 日本語能力試験日本語能力試験 And then to pass the exam We say 試験に受かる試験に受かる Or 試験に合格する試験に合格する And the past tense of 受かる would be 受かった受かった And the past tense of 合格する would be 合格した合格した So I passed the exam, we'd say 試験に受かった Or 試験に合格した And you want to say that's the reason You want to put んだ or んです at the end, right? So 試験に受かったんだお試験に合格したんだ More formally 試験に受かったんです試験に合格したんです And instead of just 試験 exam you can say the JLPT 日本語能力試験 So 日本語能力試験に合格したんです日本語能力試験に合格したんです so This is to explain why I seem happy, right? But when you want to announce it on, for example, Facebook Hey guys, I passed the JLPT You just say 日本語能力試験に合格しましたを合格した informally So when you announce it on like Facebook or Twitter Or when you report it to someone or you would just want to tell that news to your teacher for example you can say 日本語能力試験に合格しました But there is a situation where you can say 日本語能力試験に合格したんだ Other than just explaining why you are like happy or something This んだをんです can also be used when you want to talk about it like when you want to make a conversation from that topic so it's kind of like by the way this happened and I kind of want you to 
ask me questions about it. <laughs> so, for example, I'm just talking to my friend and I want to start talking about me passing the JLPT. Like, by the way, I passed the JLPT. I could say, so yeah, Nihongo no Ryokushiken Gokakushitanda. Speaking of which, or by the way, I passed the JLPT. So yeah, Nihongo no Ryokushiken Gokakushitanda. And my friend could be like, Oh, Omedeto! Wow, congratulations! So when you suddenly change the topic, or you start talking about something new, it's best to use this nda when you want to talk more about it. So like, if I said Nihongo no Ryokushiken Gokakushitanda, I kind of want my friend to ask maybe, How was it? Doudatta? Was it difficult? And stuff like that. It's kind of like in English you put the word so before saying something. Like if you want to, for example, talk about a book that you bought yesterday. Like, so I bought this new book yesterday. Also, I could be expecting my friend to be like, oh, what, what's it like? Or what's it called? So for this kind of conversation, I would use nda. So I bought a new book yesterday. I could say yesterday. Kino new book. Atarashi hon. Atarashi hon. And bought informally. Katta. Katta. So kino atarashi hon o katta. I bought a new book yesterday. And I put nda. Kino atarashi hon o kattanda. So I bought a new book yesterday. And ask me questions. My friend could be like, Donna hon? So because this is very conversational, the sort of thing that you'd say when you expect others to like, ask questions about it, it's a bit strange to put Kino hon kattanda on Facebook or Twitter. When you just want to post what you did, like on Twitter or Facebook, you just use the past tense without nda. Kino tomodachi to asonda. Kino kawaii cafe ni itta. I went to a cute cafe yesterday. Instead of kino kawaii cafe itta nda. I would say kino kawaii cafe itta nda if I'm actually talking to my friend in person or it could be on Skype or whatever. I would say this when I want to talk about it. But you'd see nda kedo or ndesu ga on Facebook or Twitter a lot. So this is quite different from nda or ndes on their own. So kino hon o katta nda. It's like, so I bought a new book yesterday, right? And when you want to say, so I bought a new book and it's so good, for example. For this kind of sentence, instead of using the word and, we would use nda kedo or ndesu ga. So kedo or ga usually mean but or though. So kaitai kedo takasugiru. For example, it mean I want to buy it but it's too expensive. Kaitai kedo takasugiru. So this kedo is used to connect two clauses and unlike demo which can only be used at the beginning of sentence, kedo can be used to connect two clauses, right? So if you use demo, the one sentence has to end, then you can put demo at the beginning. So kaitai, and then you end the sentence with the full stop or maru. And then you say demo, but however, takasugiru. It's too expensive. And this is alright, but it doesn't flow as well as kaitai kedo takasugiru, which is just one sentence. Kaitai kedo takasugiru. Or instead of kedo, we can also use ga desu ga or masu ga formally and say kaitai desu ga takasugimasu. 
買いたいですが高すぎます。And this means exactly the same thing but more formal. So, けど and が usually mean but or though, but if you say んですけどお、んですが、it's used to set up what you're going to say next. So, you want to say that the book is so interesting, but you want to say that I bought this new book first. Like, I bought this new book is just a set up, and what I really want you guys to know is that it's so good. So, I would say, 昨日新しい本買ったんだけど、マジで面白い。昨日新しい本買ったんだけどマジで面白い。So, 昨日新しい本買ったんだ。Part We are already familiar with 昨日新しい本買ったんだ。But we put けど and then マジで面白い。マジで is like seriously, really, very and 面白い。interesting。it doesn't have to be about buying a book。if you played a little bit of a new game。and you want to say it's so good。it's like you want to say。so I started playing this game a little bit。and it's so good。you'd use this。んだけど。or んですが。so you could for example say。新しいゲームを。やり始めたんだけど。本当に。楽しい。新しいゲームをやり始めたんだけど、本当に楽しい。So, 新しいゲームをやる。やる is often used as to play game. And やり始める。始める means to start. And when you want to say to start doing something, you use the must form stem of the verb. So, やる becomes やります。So, やり plus 始める to start doing to start playing. So, やり始めたんだけど本当に楽しい It's really fun. So, if you're a beginner, you probably would make a sentence like 昨日新しい本を買ったすごく面白い Which is grammatically correct, but not very natural. To sound more native, You'd say, 昨日新しい本を買ったんだけど、すごく面白い。So you didn't have a guess that that's what we would use to say and, right? Because and in Japanese, a lot of people tend to use the particle to, but this to particle can only use to connect two nouns anyway. So you can't use it between two sentences or clauses. So you can't say, 新しい本を買ったと blah blah blah. 新しい本を買ったと本当に面白い This would be even grammatically wrong. Or you might use the word, そして which means and. And yeah, そして can mean and, and you can use it at the beginning of a sentence, but it's not natural at all. Or you might use the te form of the verb, 買って because I did teach you that when you want to connect two verbs, you'd use the te form of the verb, like, 本を買って読みました This is perfect. Like, I bought it and then I read it. Just like I translate. This te particle usually means and then, so it has to be something that you do after doing something. But this is a bit different, right? I bought a new book and I want to talk about this. It's so fun, it's so good. So the first part is just a setup. Basically, you can remember that when you want to make a sentence like so I did this and blah blah blah, or so I did this but blah blah blah, you can usually use this んだけど So for example, カメラを持ってきたんだけど、SD カードを忘れちゃった。カメラを持ってきたんだけど、I brought my camera, but SD カードを忘れちゃった。Oops, I forgot my SD card. I actually made a lesson on how to ask where, like no more doko, like that's what it says in the title. And I actually 
explain this exact and I said that we often use this to ask for directions like instead of blah 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 doko desu we often say where you want to go ni ikitai desu ga so we say like I would like to go to this place and you explain the illustration you're setting up so you want to watch that video too and we also use this ndesu ga or ndakedo when you want to invite someone for example you have two tickets and you want to say so I have two tickets and do you want to come with me? Uh, you can say ticket ga ni mai arundakedo isho ni ikanai ticket ga ni mai arundakedo isho ni ikanai ticket ga ni mai ni mai is how we count to like papers or tickets and aru I have ndakedo so that's like the setup and then the main thing why I want to ask is isho ni ikanai do you want to come with me do you want to go together literally so this is like the phrase you want to use when you have two tickets and you want to invite someone or you don't even have to have two tickets you can for example say so I'm going to Disneyland next week. Do you want to come with me? More formally you can say Alright, another usage of nda ndes. When you see something and you make your own conclusion, you use nda. So basically when you can translate like, oh, so I see he's blah blah blah. Like for example, ah, oh, I see he's lost. Like the boy is on his own, maybe crying. You can make an assumption that he's lost. So you can say, my Mayo is to be lost, to get lost. And mayo chatta. Again, I made a lesson on this, this chatta. So please check that out. Mayo chattanda. Oh, he's lost then. Or someone has puffy eyes, and you can kind of guess that that person was crying. You can say, ah. Uh, Naite tanda. Naite tanda. So, naite iru is to be crying. But if you change the last te iru into te ita, or more informally just teta, that's was doing something. So, naite ita, or more informally naite ta, was crying. So, you could say, Sakura chan wa mega hare teru. Naite tanda. Oh, Sakura has puffy eyes. I'm assuming she was crying. Sakura chan wa mega hareteru. Naite tanda. So it's like you're talking to yourself and you're making an assumption. Or if you come to this room, you will see that I still have the poster of Kaneki from Tokyo Girl. And you can uh, make a guess and be like, Ah, Misa wa kaneki ga suki nanda. Misa wa kaneki ga suki nanda. So suki is an adjective and when you want to use nda or no with adjectives, you want to keep the na there. So suki na nda. Suki na no shizuka nanda. Oh, so it's quiet. Or if you meet me in person, I usually have like pink everything, pink bag, pink shoes, pink jumper, pink coat. Just, I mean, I don't tend to cover myself in pink, but like I have so many pink things. And you can guess that I like pink. So you can say, Misa wa pink ga suki nanda to yourself. 
Ah, oh, so I see. Misa likes pink. Misa wa pink ga suki nan da. And you can also use this nda when you say, oh, so you did do this. So, for example, I was talking about buying earrings for a long time, and you see that I'm wearing new earrings, for example. You can say, Piasu katanda. Piasu katanda. Oh, so you bought earrings. Or if I talked about how I want to go to Hawaii, and then on Facebook, you see my pictures, and on Instagram, you see that I'm in Hawaii, you can be like, Oh, Misa, Hawaii, tanda. Oh, so Misa went to Hawaii. Misa, Hawaii, tanda. Alright, another usage that I want to explain today is using no or ndes when you're surprised or when you're doubting. You'd usually say no with question mark. For example, 15歳 nano? 15歳 nano? Wait, what? You're 15 years old? So, 15歳 is how we say 15 years old. And because we treat age 15歳, like a noun, we put na and say na no 15歳 na no If you want to say this formally, you can say 15歳 nan desu ka? 15歳 nan desu ka? Wait, you are 15? And that is used to show that you're surprised. So you could think it like you're surprised so you want to know more about it, like you want the other person to explain like how you are actually 15. For example, you offer a drink to a girl, like Osake o gori yo, I will buy you a drink. And the girl could say, Ah, osake nomemasen. I can't drink. Osake nomemasen. And then she could say, Jugo sai nan desu. Jugo sai nan desu. I'm 15 years old. She's explaining, so she's using 15歳 nan And you could be like, Eh, 15歳 nan Wait, what? You're 15? Eh, 15歳 nan Osake nomemasen, 15歳 nan desu. Eh, 15歳 nan Or you're talking to your girlfriend and your girlfriend drops a bomb. 実は妊娠してるんだ。実は妊娠してるんだ。実は妊娠してるの I'm actually pregnant and you can be like え?え?妊娠してるの? Wait, what? You're pregnant? 妊娠してるの? And if you see a woman with big belly you can guess that she is pregnant, right? Then you can use んだ as the previous usage like Ah, Oh, I see, she's pregnant. Or you've been having a good time with a girl you met at the bar, and then you find out that she actually has a boyfriend, you can say, Oh, Oh, you had a boyfriend? <laughs> or you can jokingly say, Tomodachi itano? Oh, and didn't know you had a friend. Tomodachi itano to your friend. Maybe your friend is like, can I bring another friend? Like, tomodachi mo hitori tsurete kite mo ii? Tomodachi mo hitori tsurete kite mo ii? And you can be like, oh, tomodachi itanda. Eh, I'm surprised you had a friend. Or you thought that your friend wasn't going to a party, but she's like, Oh, I'm actually going. Oh, I changed my mind. I'm going. You can be like, Eh, hey, ikuno? What, are you going? Eh, hey, ikuno? And you can also translate it like, really? Or for example, you're shopping with your friend and your friend is thinking about buying something really weird and you want to say, Are you really buying that? You can say, Sore kau no? Sore kau no? Are you really buying that? So remember that Adding this no can make it sound like, are you really doing it? Or like, I'm surprised you're doing it. And if you say, katta no, if you use the past tense, then that means, did you really buy it? Oh my gosh, you bought it? Katta no? So remember that the this no particle can put the nuance of, did you really do that? 
or I'm surprised you did that. If you wanna say, did you buy the Pokemon game, Misa? You just wanna say, Atarashi Pokemon no game katta? Or Atarashi Pokemon no game kaimashita ka? If you say, Atarashi Pokemon no game katta no? It could sound like, did you buy Pokemon game? I'm surprised. Or, or I thought you weren't gonna buy it, but you did. So this is the common mistake. A lot of learners tend to say past tense no, like, Atarashi anime mita no? Like, I get a question like that a lot, uh, but it doesn't sound very natural because it's like, I thought you weren't gonna watch it, but you did. Or, I'm surprised, did you watch it? Rather than just, did you watch it? Just to ask, like, did you watch it? You'd say, Atarashi anime o mita? Atarashi anime o mimashita ka? Because if you say, Atarashi anime o mita no? Or, Atarashi anime o mita n desu ka? It's like, oh, I'm surprised you watched it. Or your friend is injured but is claiming that he can walk. And you will say, can you really walk there? You can say, Arukere no? Arukere no? Aruku to walk. Arukere, potential form, can walk. Arukere no? Can you really walk? All right, the video is getting so long and we covered the most common usage of this no, nda, but I want to make the part two covering more about this no or nda because it can mean a little bit more. So I will make another video on this topic. But if you've learned this so far, you're pretty good to go using this nda or ndes. Alright, thank you so much for watching. I hope this lesson helped. I hope you're not like the explainer what? Nani sore oishii no? <laughs> anymore. And if you could support me on Patreon, you could watch more videos from me and also you do get to do some exercise. So please consider supporting me on Patreon. Alright, thank you so much. Ja, matane. Bye bye.